You're listening to a Skewed Orbit original podcast. Time, weather, and... Hi, friends. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Rachel LaForce Show. That's right. I'm Rachel LaForce. I'm your host, and this is my show. For a show of any other name would be harder to Google. You're right. I am so excited. Okay, so if you're just jumping in on this episode, like, thank you so much. Glad you're here. Would encourage you to go back and listen to the start of um, this series. So this is about all about stress management <sighs> because you are wanting to dramatically change your life. You are going through something incredibly challenging. You are, I don't know, alive and a human and things are scary and uncertain. Um, so this is a key skill. I would say this is one of, I think this is a skill, dare I say, that separates, um, what is it? Separates like the men from the boys. I really do. I really feel that, that like the difference between your success as you define it and staying, staying where you are is your ability to manage your own stress because creating a life that you love is challenging. Everybody loves, even if you're like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm all about simple, intentional living or, oh, like whatever it is. I don't need to give you a million examples, right? You're already listening. So you're hooked in, but it's challenging evolving when other people aren't clapping for you is challenging. It is hard to continue to move forward despite of everything else, right? Some of you may be right now, we're like, live a life I love, La Force. I'm like going through this awful divorce, sorry it rhymed, and, you know, trying to co-parent with a narcissist or I'm trying to leave my corporate job to start this other thing. Like it's it's all always challenging. Like doing things in service of yourself is is not easy, right? It's the Joan Rivers, like it doesn't get better, you get better. And I feel like while she was talking about something, you know, she was talking about show business in general, but I feel like all the world's a stage. Welcome to the show. You know, like that main character energy, nobody else is coming to save you. Nobody is coming to take care of you. No one is setting what your boundaries are, but you. No one is saying my plate is full, but you. And, or even having the awareness that like, I don't need a full plate. I need some space on there. And like, that's the way I want to roll is knowing that I have that space available. So all of this comes into your capacity to handle stress. And I'm, what I also like to say, this is talking about the daily stress of being human. Um, this is not you know, trauma healing or any of like, dare I say, not to minimize trauma, I want to be very clear, but like big ticket items, right? Debilitating um, addictions, disease, like the that's a podcast for a different day. This is about managing the life stress. Like when, um, when I was still in my own addiction with drinking and when I was, had no <laughs> capacity to handle stress. In fact, Still a gold medal winner though. I mean, I just like, oh, nobody was better at making a mountain out of a mill hole than me in, you know, 2016. And I remember I got a flat tire in Los Angeles and I went in to talk to my therapist as though I had the award winning story for her. And it was quite an Oscar winning moment of the performance that I put on. And she goes, are you done? I was like, excuse me. She was like, you got a flat tire in Los Angeles. You think you're the first fucking one? It's like you've been talking for 20 minutes about this flat tire. And so that's that, those are the things we're talking about. What are these small things? What are the things that aren't going right? What are the things that keep coming up for you that you are giving so much energy to that you're burning out? There isn't any awareness because stress management is awareness, right? The ability to live a life you love and be able to mitigate the stress to deepen your capacity for it is a skill and it's a practiced skill. So 
last uh, episode for the first one, we talked all about uh, analyzing and looking at what is your life now and how do those systems either support you or create more stress, right? Um, And there's probably like, you know, I like you to know that I'm doing the work too. One of the things I'm working on, I talked about this in our, um, our, the workshop I taught last week, activating your life force energy. The link will be in here. So if you didn't get to watch it, go check out the link. And that one of the things that I said where I'm getting in my own way is by the end of the day, I am so burnt out from, you know, striving and stretching myself and staying present. People underestimate the exhaustion of staying present, to truly stay present with my both of my boys for my business, to do what needs to be done and do it in a way that feels fulfilling to me and moving the ball forward without burning out. That's tiring in and of itself, right? You're probably tired from hearing it. Um, and so we have to become aware of where what are we doing when we get burnt out? For me, at the end of the day, I have a tendency, as I'm sure most people do, I'm going to throw on Netflix. I'm not even going to find something I want to watch. I'm going to like stop and start different documentaries. I'm scrolling on my phone. I'm kind of responding to DMs. I'm so burnt out and I'm so spent. And it may be easy to be like, well, that's just like what I do because I'm tired. And that's fine if that's my choice. The difference is that is not giving back to me in any way. The only reason that that's what I do is because that's the pattern. It's different. Like right now there's two television shows that I love, Perfect Couple on Netflix and Chimp Crazy on HBO. So I will dedicate an hour of my evening when I'm ready to turn my brain off and go in and my husband, I got to decorate the whole house as I saw fit. And then he got the entertainment room. So it's a total man cave down there, but it's got this like I don't know. It's like an 82 inch TV or something. It's fucking huge and too big. But anyway, so I can go down there and like choose. It's an active choice that I'm going to veg out. I'm going to watch this thing. But what I'm not going to do anymore is just stay up until 1130 doing nothing because I'm burnt out. Guess what? Then I've had blue light in my face for the last two hours. My brain is so overstimulated by watching everybody's hot take about everything and then reading like whatever else it is. And then, oh, and then you're going to try to lay down and calm yourself down to go to bed after you were already spent. I'm working against myself. So I'm creating more stress. So that's a big point of contention. I have to look at that area of my life. That's what's kind of clogging up my life force energy. It's what's working against myself. So what can I do instead, right? Like I find a lot of times if I spend money on something, I know I'm going to use it because my money is valuable to me and I like to respect my money. So I bought these, I was TikTok shop, they got me, these magnesium uh, like pouches essentially that you can put in your tub and they like disintegrate, right? And I was like, that's something I can do. And then that way that will naturally calm my body down. And then I can read with like my soft orange light until I fall asleep. And that's fine. That's still a way for me to zone out, but that's something that's like minimizing that stimulation, bringing myself down, nurturing my nervous system and allowing me to have better sleep. And then thus the next day I'm going to wake up. And now we compound that over a long period of time. That's significantly more energy that I've given myself. Right. And what I always like to say is like, this isn't about life hacking. That may be a result of what we do, But it's not like, oh, I've got five minutes here. I should brush my teeth while also taking content and then like cobbling together new shoes or what. Like, you don't have to drain every second of every day. But it's how can we make sure that the things that are happening, we are choosing that they give back to us. And then if we're choosing something we know doesn't give back to us, it's an active choice, right? So, like, when my family, we all go out for like Mexican food. We love Mexican. Or we order, um, you know, our favorite pizza place because all of our family's over. That food probably is not going to leave me feeling as good as a warm, nourishing bowl that I make for myself. But it's an active choice, right? You got to live and like pizza and Mexican food, fucking the best, um, right? So we want to become aware of when are those active choices versus that lack of awareness. Cool? So – That is what I had you guys do two weeks ago, right? And then in between, I dropped the September um, energy forecast and newsletter because I also found it's important. I wanted you to sit with that before I just threw another thing at you because that's what we do all of the time, (laughs) guilty, which is like, 
okay, next lesson. Okay, next lesson. Okay, no, I got it. No, I've integrated it. I've already integrated it. I already know and I'm ready for all my blessings. I was like, no, I don't think so, (laughs) right? So now we want to begin to deepen our capacity for stress by practice. And that means um, you are going to have to learn what is too much for you. Here's where it gets difficult is what is too much for you in certain seasons will change. What I'm able to take on now that I have, I'm building out more of a team. I now have two support people. I have, um, I have a husband that's a huge support. We have, you know, two sets of grandparents that are local. We have another set of grandparents that are so supportive, even for being far away. We have like all of the just support naturally that I have in place now. I'm not pregnant. I'm not breastfeeding. My children are in school at least for four hours a day, five days a week. Like that amount, I can now take on a little bit more. I can run myself a little bit more. That endurance is going to be greater because I have more support, right? I have more options um, versus when we first moved here and Jonah was like six months old. And then very shortly after that, I'm pregnant again, especially first trimester if you've ever been or you know people that have been pregnant. First trimester, you're sick, you're exhausted. We were renovating the inside of our home. So, you know, still trying to like hack away and build this business. Like my capacity was a lot different than what it is now. So that's why the second huge part of this one is let's deepen our capacities for stress. I'm going to come back to that. How do we do that? This is how. Is one is releasing any sort of outcome. Like, when that's when we really get stressed, right? You, um, you get a flat tire, you call AAA. They say, Oh, it's going to be a certain amount of time. Or you don't have AAA, right? You get a flat tire. And let's say like, I've done that before. And I'm like, great. I have to put this on a credit card because I'm so broke. I don't have any money to pay this. And now I put this on a credit card. So that means I can't put this thing on a credit card, right? Like we've all, or maybe we haven't all been there, but uh, I know a handful of us have been there where it's like, you're stealing from Peter to pay Paul, right? You have to survive, but we have to play the tape out. No matter where you are, no matter you know, again, I always like to say, and I say this jokingly, but I'm also going to trust that you understand the intention when I say this. It's not the trauma Olympics, right? We all have been in different places of that daily earthly stress, but I have been in the trenches before and knowing where your options are limited, your resources are limited. And I just want to offer you, and please, if this is you, I want you, I need you to hear me say this that you always have options and you have to play the tape out because what's going to happen is when you get all up in arms, I got to put this $250 on a credit card and then I'm not going to be able to get this. And then I'm not going to be able to get that. And then it becomes this whole story. And like me, you go into your therapist and then you you spend 20 minutes talking all about how this awful thing is, or you accept it. Hey, you know what? Life happens and shitty things happen. I'm going to be grateful for my problems. And now I'm going to look for, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to figure out I now need to figure out how I'm going to make more money and or I'm going to trust that that 250 is going to replenish itself. I'm going to stay in my power, even those times where we can't see to the other side. And I'm going to trust that there is an outcome that works out because that is a place where you have owned what has happened. You are, you are owning the experience and also staying open to a solution. That's what, that's what we do when we run the tape out. I do that all the time right now, right? We're building these two businesses and we've, uh, we've always only had one car. We are going to expand and get a second car and then running the math on all these things. I was like, can we run for another two months as being a one car household? Like, can we save, you know, that as, as like expense? Because yeah, when you're setting up these two businesses and they're not stable yet, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And so same thing, I had to go back to the mat and be like, play the tape out. Okay, we come up against a day where we can't function without a second car. One, there's Uber. There's always that's available to us. Two, we have two sets of grandparents that have two cars that are two car households. We could figure out how to utilize that. Like you just have to slow down. But that's what happens is when we, when our, when our response is I'm fucked, this is fucked. Why do I get fucked over? which so many of us, even if you're not in that place anymore, 
that programming is so rich. It is so deep. And I really want to take a second and acknowledge that because I know so many of you that are in that position or you have been in that position. And let's say if you're somebody who has been in that position and you're not there anymore, I need you to take a second and acknowledge for yourself how fucking powerful it feels to not be in that position anymore. And that's not throwing shame if you if you're like, oh, holy shit, is she talking about me? Because that's how I feel all of the time. I can only speak to it because I've been there. But that is where we come into the sense of in order to deepen your capacity for stress, you have to learn to have awareness. You have to learn to release the attachment to outcome. And you do that by playing the tape out. Because that way, and the more that you do that over and over and over again, you are able, you deepen that capacity for stress because you know what, like I, like I said the other week, like what ball do you want to go for? Because we live in a world where like you you can chase anything you want to. We, we have a million different pieces of messaging, of fear mongering, of you can't do it. Why would you do that? Um, or other people that may be quote unquote farther along than you or they're doing what you want to do. And you're getting that messaging all the time. So then you're like, oh my God, I'm so far behind because I'm not like this person or that person. Like we have a million times a day to step outside of ourselves. In fact, it that's why I said it is so challenging to live a life that you are living in your highest, creating a life that you love because you are asked to come back to yourself multiple times a day, all day. And, you know, we have to like that point again of like, can you deepen your capacity for stress? Like right now with our studio, it was already supposed to be open you know, America's favorite brand director. She's right here in the room. Uh, Caroline Watt, right. She was coming in town. Cause it was like, all right, we're going to do all the buying. We're going to get it set up. We're going to, Oh, the demo hasn't started yet. Oh, okay. Oh, the line of credit. There was more paperwork. It's still not here yet. Oh, okay. And there can be that panic moment of, Oh my God, we're right. We bit off way more than we could chew. How are we going to do this? And then I was like, let's run the tape out. What's the worst thing that happens here? I go into a little bit more debt. It's not like there's not an overall plan. We will be making that money back. We know that. We've done the projections. We've done the work. So if we're going to do this, we're going to slow down and we're going to do it the right way. So rather than, right, it was an exercise for me and my husband to do it together because he's like, there's no way we got to get this space open. And like, I'm like, first of all, there's other people who can uh, demo that can do this construction work. Let's start there. There's plenty of people. We live in a giant city, plenty of people who would be more than happy to take our money. Okay. Right. I would say it's like what you're seeking is seeking you. If you have a solution, there's somebody out there that's like, oh my God, my contract business is so slow this month. Everybody's going back to school. Nobody's traveling. Like I, you know, oh my God, like how am I going to be able to make payroll? It's like that person's waiting for us to call and go, Hey, I got a job for you. Right. We are always the opportunity to be solutions for other people. And when we begin to have that sort of awareness we can decide what are the things that are really stressful, right? Save the bad days for the real bad days. I always say, as long as we go to bed and we are healthy and our parents are safe and our kids are safe, we've won. Everything else is figure outable. Everything. And I mean, even the really big stuff, because even if it's like, I was listening to, this is so, I, I can't, it's even too cliche for me, but we've gotten Jonah into the Beatles because, and again, Jonah's three, because if I listen to any more Mickey Mouse Club, I'm going to drive off of the road. I can't, it's makes your eyes bleed eventually. So I was like, Jonah, I think you'd really be into the Beatles. And he calls my mom Groozy because her name is Grandma Susie. And that was too hard to say. So we call her Groozy. And he was like, oh, Groozy loves the Beatles. I was like, yeah. So we were listening to Let It Be. And I'm, of course, in the front, spiritual mom, just really singing and into it. And then, you know, it was like, there will be an answer, like, let it be. And just coming back to that of like, let's get to a place where it's like, let's trust that there will be an answer. And sometimes the answer is there is not an answer. And, you know, but your ability to know, let's save that energy for the things that don't have answers, for the things that really do throw us up against a wall. Not $250 for a, you know, it's like, yeah, $250 when you don't have any money is a lot of money. I've been there. Um, but it's like, you know, people dying, people getting sick, 
losing your job unexpectedly, right? It's like those really big things. And then also how can we create options for ourselves? And when we don't freak out and we don't go into that mindset of like taking on all of that stress and seeing it that way, we create the space to be able to work in service of ourselves. We have the space to go, what are my options? And if there aren't any, what can I do to create them? Are there state resources or, you know, like, do I, um, can I apply for some sort of, you know, artist's grant and then I could take that money and put it toward, you know, and live on that money. Like there, there is always something. We live in a wildly abundant universe and there are plenty of fucking people. I don't have to tell you that have billions and billions of dollars that are not any more smart or aware or anything than you are. It was nothing but circumstance that money and resources and options and be, and having the ability to navigate and knowing that you will be okay exists, period. So we need to begin to deepen our capacity for stress so that you have the strength to be able to get out of that, you know, unhealthy marriage, that you have the energy to start the business you want to, so that you have the energy to tend to your health needs. You know, you're really struggling with your health or you have, you know, um, uh, immune issues or, you know, all of these things. It's like, let's give you the space and the energy to attend to the things that need your attention and not going for all of the things that are really not worth our time and our stress and our energy. And it's hard. It's really hard because when we have been in a place or a mindset where everything is an emergency and, you know, everything is either like our fault or it's someone else's fault, right? That's a big like mindset where it's like, it's everybody else's fault. Well, why it didn't work out for us. And can we move into the place of ownership, accepting our choices, accepting that it's life on life's terms, accepting that there's the earthly politics. If you live in Los Angeles, yeah, you're probably going to blow a tire or two, <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you know, it, one day unsuspectingly, someone's going to hit your bumper. And it's like, dude, that sucks. Like now you got to do that whole rigmarole. And like, it's like, yeah, just you get called for jury duty. You know, you can't afford to go, but now you got to go. Like there are things like that that just suck and they happen. And, and just what we're not doing anymore is giving them all of us to where now it's even shittier and now it's even harder because the beauty right? As we, as we bring this episode in for landing, the beauty of finding that space, the space between the incident and you, all that is, is emotion. And so can, when we can begin to alchemize and neutralize that, and that will happen over time. Again, that's a practice. I feel like now it doesn't mean that I don't get stressed out or frustrated, right? Or that my body holds the tension but it's that I at least have a better awareness. I will give myself that. I have a much better awareness of what are we going to freak out about? And I'll tell you what, these days, and so this is a beautiful thing that children have done for me. I'm like, are my kids safe? Great. They're in much more. That's all right. We're going to be all right. And, you know, I really think that this is another thing where I talked about who are also the people in your life. If you are surrounded by people, whether by choice or, you know, I know a lot of times with family and that's so stressful where it's like, you know, those are the people where it's like, it's always somebody else's fault or it's always whatever. It's like, we have to, when you are releasing that space between the incident and you and learning to neutralize that, you're going to have better ability to set boundaries with people of being like, that's your side of the street. So that's yours to clean up. And this is mine. And it applies to everything in our life. It's just, again, go and click that link and listen to the activating your life force energy workshop, because that is, it is the crux of everything. It is it's so vital. I mean, it's literally your internal engine that allows you to move forward. And with what you're doing and what you have come to this world to create and to set up for yourself, for your family, for your community, um, and, and however you're participating, we need you firing at all cylinders to be able to do that thing, not to be stressing about the things that are going to exist whether you choose to stress about them or not. 
because the flat tires will always happen. Getting fired without reason will happen. Getting, you know, it's like all of these things that are not fair. And that's a lot of our work as highly attuned people is just accepting (laughs) that that's a lot of what this human experience is. And I, for one, hate that part. I'm really not a fan. But when we can have that that sense of acceptance, we can just move through it faster, right? We can get to it faster. That manifestation, that business you want, like that life that you want. We have to break down all of that, you know, what we used to spend all of the energy going after. And we need to be able to learn to give that energy back to ourselves because we are an energy being, right? If you put two plants side by side and you water one and you sing to it and you tend to it and you fertilize it and you put it in the sun and you you know water it properly and all the things, you're going to have a beautiful plant. If you seldom water the other one or you kind of talk shit to it or I don't know, or like you put it in a cloud, you know, those things. I mean, it's like, we're the exact same way. I don't know why that's like such a spiritual hot take. It's like, isn't that just like science at this point? Like nurture yourself, nurture your body, tell people to fuck off when you need to come back to yourself and let's continue to deepen our capacity for stress so that we have the awareness of what are our choices? Are they in service of ourself or otherwise? And why are we making that choice? so that we can release the outcome when shitty earthly things happen to us. We can release our attachment to outcome. And that's the fuck me, fuck this. Why does this always fucking happen to me? Kind of mindset, right? That we have to make it this big dramatic like opus and then alchemizing that space in between and just being able to move forward. Right. Right. Okay. Guys, I think that's it. I think we did it. I think we nailed it. I really would love to hear any feedback you have. I mean, this is certainly something that like we're going to keep circling back to um, because I think it's just such a vital, especially in this just day and day and age in modern world, it's, it's something that is so helpful for each and every one of us. So I am so excited for you to listen to this. Uh, Last Sunday, if you're listening to this when it comes out, it would have been Sunday, September 8th. We had our first workshop for this uh, 20-month journey that we're now on. I've made the grand declaration that I'm getting fit and famous by 40. So I've invited all of you to, you know, let's electrify your genius over the next 20 months and let's watch this transformation happen for you, right? Um, because it's that feeling of like, if not now, when? And this is something that we can get to do together. We're going to take it down into bite sizes. We're going to meet in a free workshop every three months. All of those will always be free. I will have a different giveaway. I will have different freebies for you um, all along the way. Uh, I have a free workbook that I created for you. If you're somebody, if you're a note taker like me, you do morning pages, things like that, you can print this out. You could use it digitally. And kind of have that as a tracker, a mile marker of what this journey is going to be like. Uh, And so it was such a great workshop. And the replay is just as powerful. Um, And so that is in the link here in the show notes. So please go and check that out. Um, all of my one-on-ones, my, my books are open right now. And so I would absolutely love to work with you. Also, we're working on a new signature offer. Stay tuned. I'm going to be dropping more details about that. As always, you can go and check out my sub stack. Uh, I cannot like encourage you to go and do that enough. It's nine 99. So at this point you're kind of losing money by not signing up to be like, just to be perfectly frank with you, uh, because there are, so many great meditations on there and articles and journal prompts and secondary uh, like bite-sized pieces of content where I think it's just, especially for this next 20 month journey is going to be so beneficial. So go and check that out. But if nothing else, I hope that you continue to do things in service of yourself. You continue to know that everything you need, you already have. And um, uh, don't blink because life goes fast. And so I'm excited for you to Live your best life. All right. That's it for me. Tune out, tune in. Love you, mean it. Time, weather, and...